Yeah, so thank you very much. So, so the, it, it is the first time of the lectures, of the series of lectures, and the first three are given by Pierre Chapira, and I think he explained how it works, at least in the regular case, and I think it, I'll start a little bit what's going on in the regular case, and then I'll shift to irregular case. Okay, so, so we consider a complex manifold X, <clears throat> and we consider the OX there. So that is the end sheaf. So of uh, tempered harmonic functions. Functions. And that behaves very well in some sense in the following way. If there is a morphism of complex manifolds, then first uh, there are two big, two it's major functorial property. One is you start OX tempered one on X, and you tensor with uh, the transfer by module. So that is a dy dx module, and dx is a ring of differential operators on X. And that is equal to OI. So more or less the pullback of the tempered distribution on Y can be described on X. And the uh, next one. So this F upper shrink is just in the sense of LDA polarity for local, that is without. I mean this one? The F upper shrink on the. Ah, yeah, yeah, that is a. Yes, but that is an inversion of the of the Verdi's. Ah, okay. Yeah. Inversion. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that is in it in the sheaf of the oh, no 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 no. I'm sorry. F inverse the Y modules. So that is in the in the chief sense, that is also in the chief sense. And another one is if F is co coherent OX module, and if the support of F is proper over Y, then F tensor OX the F star is isomorphic to star F tensor. That is OX. So that is a stability. So that is a, again a coherent sheaves, at least coherent sheaves cohomologies, and so that commutes. So that's a natural one. And so as a consequence, that holds in the derived sense, uh, in the D-module case, or good, I'll explain good or case I good, dx. <coughs> and we assume that support M is proper over Y. Then, so that is a D-module sense. DMF, M tensor D, OX is inside D, OX. So that is in ID. So both are true. <coughs> so those are the very factorial 
both parties of the initial tempered attributions and the t tempered hallmark functions. And by using this, we, the main theorem for the one is if M is regular holonomic in the derived category of DX modules with regular holonomic cohomology groups, then first is a drum of M, tempered drum, so that is by the definition M, where OX T is OX tensor OX OX T, and omega X is the, the highest degree differential forms shift. And so that is isomorphic to the usual drum. So, so in the regular case, the drum cohomology calculated in the te tempered sense is the same as the usual one. And the second one is uh, XT tensor M, that is, that is solution solution chief and works. Or here, M is solution chief. So, and so that is uh, in IDX. And if you go to DX modules, then M is isomorphic to R home. I think by his notation, ICX, so TM, OX. <clears throat> so those are three properties. And as a corollary, or the, there is an equivalence of categories, Vx is isomorphic to uh, at the construct receives Cx by the run functor. So that is the main theorem. <clears throat> And I think he explained, Pierre Chapelle explained a little bit how to prove it. And the main ingredient is to reduce this theorem to a very simple sieves by Debussard. And it means, in the following sense, so you so at PM, we have statement, some statement on M, so that is DX. <clears throat> and assume that it satisfies the following condition that I'm going to write, then P is true for any. So it means it, in order to prove it, we prove something, some properties on M. So the first one is locality. So PM is true if P UI M UI 
for uh, open covering. So that is a locality. So that property pass at px to make sure that it concerns with x. Is that the, there is an implicit condition yes. that p of m depends only on the isomorphism class of m? Uh, yes, but, but uh, that, that is a corollary of t. So that is the first property. So I will give another property. So I think that, yeah, I think it's, for example, I think that, that implies this. So if the, at the distinct triangle and Pxm prime and Pxm double prime is two, then Pxm is two. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, let me see. I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, that is a co corollary of the, the, the other one. Right? So, so, so uh, it is not the end. So, <laughs> yeah. And C is PXM is true, then PX. Um, the shifted one is true. And uh, M, M double prime is true. So direct summon is true. And uh, I think it, it, it is not yet appeared. <laughs> F is projective and M M is the uh, uh, regular homonomic on X, and we assume that the PXM, then its direct image is. Do you assume that it, it has a, a good filtration condition? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, Press better to assume it. But it, 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 in that it really like case, that is uh, automatically true. Ah, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but uh, better to uh, assimilate, yeah. I think that, that is. Yeah. And is it, uh, and the good means that on each relatively compact there is a filtration? Yes, that's right. Ah. Yeah. And projective means that globally it is in PN cross Y or it is locally, what does it mean projective? Ah, uh, yeah, oh, of course. Because that is a property is local, so you, you can assume that that is projective it, it locally on Y, but on forever. So it assume that that is projective globally. Okay. Yeah. So there is a uh, it ample bundle on X and yeah. And that is the last one. If M. has a normal form along a normal crossing divisor. Then PX7 is <coughs> Yeah. So I think it depends on the definition. For example, if you assume that M zero has a normal form, then uh, P zero is true. The definition of normal form of something like for one quant system, so for? Uh, yeah, yeah. First, in his de de definition, you have to assume that P zero is true. Yes. Ah, or for one quant, then or, zero is direct sum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, the direct sum is that true. So the purpose is we want to generalize it to the irregular case. So there are several parts we have to change. Of course, for th those kind of things, you have to consider the statement for holonomic modules. 
and the, uh, and the problem is what is a normal form? <clears throat> and in a regular case, that is rather simple, but unfortunately in a irregular case, that is rather complicated. <clears throat> So, so that is uh, I'm going to explain now. So say so that is a classical case, classical ordinary differential equations. The theory of linear with ordinary differential equations. So you take a singular point in the, say, in a complex, in an open set of the complex domain, and you take for the sake of simplicity, dx over dxp, where p is a zero z, dzm plus mz, where AJZ is homomorphic one, and AJ0 has A0 is zero, say A0 is zero, zero. <coughs> but only zero is a single point. <coughs> and so at least M is isomorphic to OXM outside, at locally at, at outside t t t zero as a at O module. And then the classical theorem says the following thing. Plus, it will not be very precise. So here, plus the, the, I think we, if you want to be to cover the other cases, then you have to. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but I think uh, to understand what's going on, I think it's e enough. So that is not the exact theorem, but approximately two with something, and. Uh, so, assuming those conditions, then there is phi j z and or best right all the things. So that's a finite sum, and k nu is that is finite sum, say k nu is in q. So that is a place series of this function. And uh, some ah, the, 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 the M solutions. And the, the, the lambda J, you see. And another function, AJZ. So that is it's dead of the new one some number. So that is a polynomial in log z and AJ nu is formal power series in a uh, fraction of power of, say, k, uh, a for some integer. <coughs> Such that uj, say, z, is exponential phi z, z lambda j, a j z, is a formal solution of P equals. Okay. So 
they are linearly independent solutions, linearly independent. They are linearly independent solution of P U equal to zero. And uh, so that is the first one. And the second one is, so that is a formal solution. And that is, uh, that helps to get a real solution. So you have zero. And you take an arbitrary direction, say theta zero. Then you can find some the angular, some angular neighborhood, say u, <clears throat> and, so, so, and uj z, that, that is holomorphic on this the angular neighborhood. And it is a solution, holomorphic solution defined on U. And Uj is asymptotically equal to Uj hat. <clears throat> okay. So that is the one. So that is J equal one to M. So as you know that there are outside the singularity, there are m linearly independent solution of p u equals zero, and u j gives such linearly independent solutions. And so the meaning of asymptote means u j minus u j s. I will explain. It satisfies some condition. Uh, So that is Z and uh, uh, perhaps Z lambda is better. Exponential Z. <coughs> Where UJS is so here that is a formal sum and you truncate. So UJS is this part. And here there is AJ, but you truncate. So that is, uh, say, AJ new. Yes. Why? Yes. Arbitrary integer, yeah. Uh, let me, yeah, let me see. K is smaller than S and A, J, nu, Z is Well, it doesn't matter so much, but so that's satisfied condition. So if you truncate its formal C's up to some degrees, then that is approximately that UJS, UJS with some normal term. So in this way, we can get the solution. <clears throat> but the problem is those UJ is not unique. So UJ hat is, if you more or less, you can specify, but for UJ hat, it, uh, for UJ, it, even if UJ hat is determined, UJ is not unique because the, there's some, uh, for example, real Fj prime is smaller than, say, very much smaller than real Fj on U. Then uj prime plus uj or uj 
is asymptotically u hat g bar. Or you, 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 uh, let me see, it's bigger. Uh, yeah, j prime is u hat j. So, so it means if that is true, then prime is very small. So even if you add it, this asymptotic expansion doesn't change because here there is a big term and uj prime is very small comparing to this. You stated this for uh, solutions of uh, 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 an n's order equation. Yes. Can you, it, it can, one can pass to the associated first order yes, yes. For, a co for a vector. Is there a difference uh, in the statement for both? No, 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 same, same. You, you, you have to adjust it, but that is the same one. Uh, yeah, so it just says if those are, let me see. Yeah. Oop. So if that is not in this form, but let's say that U is that U and so those are quantum vectors of unknown functions. Then you assume that uh, uh, this part is the same. So those are the quantum vectors. And this part you, you don't ch change, okay? And not exact, what does it mean? Hmm? You said theorem not exact. I, no, I, I, I think if I, I, I say it like that, it, it, is, it is exact. No, no, I don't, I'm sorry. Maybe you should assume maybe if k nu are strictly negative. Oh. It's this exponent of uh, on the first part. Uh, well, no, if j is equal to just mm -hmm. no, no, on this the one? left. No, no, on the left. Uh, yes. This is, uh, it's still on the left, yeah. You mean this one? No, no, still on the left. Yes. No, 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 just on the left. The first column. In the oh, first column. First column. Right. K nu as should be strictly negative, I suppose. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you can yeah, add it, add it. But it, it doesn't change. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I, I will say. So, uh, as Maxima said, you, you, you can change it other one, yes. So, Pj is not unique. So, that is one part, one important part. So, so that is a question. And so the, how to interpret it? So there is a work of, of Green and uh, the same Mary Blanche to so how to interpret it. <clears throat> so you consider x and you take a real blow up. So recall that it is more or less uh, r i theta and the i theta is, uh, so that is a complex number with absolute value one, okay? <clears throat> So it is like that. And so that is x tilde. And you go to something. So that is zero. And you blow up by square. So it co contains s. So this part is s. So that is r. <coughs> so that is s1. OK. So you consider a x tilde, so that is of, oh, that plus x minus s is zero, and that is contained x tilde. So that is a homomorphic function outside the s, and f is temperate. So here, more or less, F is smaller than R minus N. Okay. 
some constant and some like So that is a sheaf of rings on X tilde. And you have M, and you now go pi inverse, pi inverse, pi inverse. Okay. You so uh, you sh you drift the ring to from O X to A X tilde ten point one. Okay. So that is a D A module. And that is, in fact, isomorphic to uh, dA expansion. <clears throat> so, so this fact is rather easy because if you by that theorem, uj exponential minus phj, so that is by that condition, that is tempered, and moreover, that is invertible. So that is AX to the invertible one. So by this one, you can give an explicit isomorphism between them. So that is an isomorphism. <coughs> so that is one part. And what they, Turin and Margaret, consider is the following thing. You consider the solution sheaf, and you consider it, uh, say, plus u is in just or x theta s, p equals zero and you restrict S. So that is a sheaf on S. <clears throat> and you consider a filtration of S. So namely, you consider phi. So that is U, such that U is, uh, say, see, this part is not minus N exponential. Uh, real part of where phi z is those pieces cities or say or minus one something uh, b some pieces is okay. <clears throat> Pardon? Capital N is the. Uh, some N. Some complex. Some constant, positive constant, and some N, and expansion. So, for example, those UJZ, UJ, UJ belongs to SVJ, and if it satisfies this condition, uj prime would also be on it. So, so that is s psi if, for example, real part of phi is real part of phi. Uh, yeah. uh, of course, all some. Uh, some region. So, of course, this relation changes according to S. So, which uh, point is considered? So, the, 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 that is a filtration, but it moves on S. Okay? So, you c consider this. <clears throat> and then, their theorem says uh, more or less 
draw the filter to object, so that gives the filtration of S. And more or less, the melamonic connection on X, S, X with a singularity at zero is corresponding to S to the filtered objects. So the attitude. <coughs> okay. So how? So that is a one-dimensional case, and of course that is too naive to extend to to an arbitrary dimension and for arbitrary holonomic d modules. So how? how to interpret this one in a higher-dimensional case? And the method is to use uh, so-called enhanced shift. So it means, so we consider the following object, consider R cross S cross R. <coughs> S is that boundary of X tilde. And you consider S. Uh, or pass, 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 uh, you consider on this, so say P, P minus S, okay? <coughs> and you consider S, P, and so C is real part of it, okay? And you sum up. So that is a constant shift on this space. <clears throat> so that, that is a sub shift. And then, so to give a filtration is more or less equivalent to give such an object. It is more or less equivalent. So that is a one, one, but so that is not enough because, as Maxim said, phi is not unique. For example, S phi is S phi plus constant. Because that condition of modulation estimation does not change. So, so that is not enough, because uh, if you interpret, because of that you can put C here, then uh, it becomes all the, the constant shift. So if you work in a usual shift, it doesn't work. So the idea is you don't consider this one, but you consider uh, to in the chief, uh, C in S. <clears throat> it, in fact, it is not exactly on R, but you, you have to, to compactify R on, so that is, uh, so that is a sheaf, so P by, P by is, so you consider compactification of R to S. And you consider this one. Uh, it doesn't matter so much. I will explain later. Say uh, infinity or R. It doesn't matter so much. Yeah, I I'm going to explain later. Anyway, so you consider this one, then that is one. So that is an end chief. And so now you consider not on S, but you can consider on X now. If such an object can be 
considered as indusive on x. So that is, so we call that is enhanced relationship. Enhanced means we add one variable here. And so as you see that to add one variable is more or less to give a moving iteration, iteration that moves. Okay. So so here there are so we add one variable and uh, we have to compactify on R. In fact, so it in the shift itself, if you consider on R then that has a local property. So that is a stack on S times R. So if we see goes to infinity, more or less that becomes the constant shift. If you consider it on S times R. But if you compactify it, then it is not. So that is what I'm going to explain now. <coughs> so <coughs> So I repeat it. So, so in a, a ordinary differential equation case, more or less, if you go to x tilde and if you consider tempered, that is the tempered homework function defined on the angular neighborhoods, then that becomes to us, very simple one. And, and that is one point. So because of that, so the solution have some filtration, and that can be interpreted as an indusif on the uh, base space times r, one dimensional manifold added. <coughs> so, so the next. I want to explain how we realize those kind of theories. <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah. So one is, as I explained, we have to get to compactify it. So that I'm going to explain now. So you, so in a general case, you have some manifold, but you add an infinite point, so that is hopefully embedding. So that is a kind of compactification or partial compactification. So here, and the complement is a closed set, so that is a closed set. <clears throat> so you have the hat by I star or that's the same. So that, that is a full subcategory of you have the category of sheaves on M hat. And in this case, you can divide it, but it does not give a new thing. So that is nothing but KM. So it, in this case, in a usual shift case, we don't need such a maneuver, but in, <coughs> in the shift case, we do the same thing. It, 
it is not the okay. They are not at all isomorphic. So we have to show that compactification is uh, rather important. So definition is so M and bar is a border space if M is open. Mm -hmm. And we d define this category, the reliable category of indices on the border space as this. So that's the definition. And uh, I think it, it, I'm not, it, it, that is it rather routine. So it, I will not so, so much de develop the theory. But uh, so we say that uh, there are two border spaces, and we want to define a category of border spaces, and that is a morphism. It means F is a continuous map, and gamma F bar and bar is proper, where gamma f is a graph of f, and gamma f bar is the closure in m tensor n half, the closure of the graph. And we assume that is proper. <coughs> okay. So then, it is easy to see that, that that becomes a category. So you can consider the category of border spaces. And in each border space, you, you can define the detailed category of indices. And you, you have a functorial one. So you have the, the operations of one, for example, if f Then you can define and so direct image and direct image with compass support to and, and F inverse and F weak. The same way. So here there are no regularity assumptions on the spaces. It's just arbitrary topological space. Uh, I think better to assume that. Uh, so here we call that the space a topological space is good. It means uh, it's a house of locally compact uh, and uh, what did you call the number of the number at countable at infinity. Infinity and perhaps a finite Fabi termination. I think that is enough.
It's not a bit confusing. M, M hat and hat are compact, then any map of continuous map is gives a morphism there, yes? Mm -hmm. If but M is compact, M hat and N hat are Yes, compact. yes, yes. Yes. So, yes, that is right. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what is the, the second, the last line? Is F upper plus or F upper? I don't read. Ah, you mean the, this one? So, that, that is directive. Ah, Schräg, and the yeah. first one is F inverse? Y yes. Yeah. I think it. Yeah, the definition is like that, but that, I think that is not important. So you have two projections, say Q1, Q2, and this one is Q2. Uh, And and so on. Uh, I think they are adjoint, so you, you can get it easily. <coughs> and then the usual. Usual properties of direct to direct image or home, or, and it also you can define tensor product and home and so on. So it is exactly the same as the usual in the sheaves or sheaves. So where where the finite flabby dimension enters in the? I think it is not so important, but I uh, I think that is a uh, yeah I, here it, uh, I was not so precise, but uh, so if you consider the bounded one, then it needs. So I think you can remove it, but then you have to be careful on the dimension the time so they are to so they so bounded compass goes to it infinite bound so that's a little bit technical one so it's I think you don't need it but then you have to be very careful because in the case of it in the sheaves there's no it inject objects in the category of indices, there is no injective objects, and I think the injective dimension is infinite. So you have to be a little bit careful. But I think I think that that is a very technical assumption. Yeah. So. Example is so assuming that M M hat is a border space, then so you consider that that is a border space M M hat that is border space M hat. Then those are the morphisms of border space. So if you write J, <coughs> so you have J star, oh, no, 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 J inverse, so J inverse, so that is in fact isomorphic to J star and so that's an inverse image. And that is nothing but the quotient map. So but by the definition, that is a quotient of this one by 
this one, so the either it is quotient of a functor, so that is a quotient functor. And you have So the, they are not equal, and for example, this one okay, is uh, okay, M times K, and RJ star K is R home KM. So that is a total. Yeah, I think there are, uh, uh, I think because it behaves exactly similar to the, uh, the usual uh, direct image functor and so on, so it will not explain more. Okay. So. I think it will uh, take up five minutes or ten minutes break. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we shall start. Okay. So now I explained those. Uh, I will explain those. Adding one variable case. <clears throat> so now you consider. The, as I explained, not R, but it's, it's compatification. So one way is you consider R bar. So that is so that is a topological space. So that is isomorphic to the closed interval. And or P1R. Projective line, and then with both are the compactification, and so R bar or R P one R. So those are both at the space, and they are isomorphic as a both at the space. <clears throat> so we shall write it R infinity. So that is this both at the space. But P1R is as a one point infinity. Yes. But what is it? So that is a R and one point of compactification. But so the, 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 the complement is two points and then one point. So yeah, but morphism is symmetric on the complement. Morphism, morphism is symmetric only of open parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that M, M1, N2, N morphism is only a continuous map. From M to N, satisfying some condition, such that gamma F bar to M bar at is proper. So, so the, the at is it isomorphic. So the, those are it isomorphic as a bordered space. So basically, yeah, it should be. Otherwise, you can't work. <clears throat> so I think it, it uh, it's not so many difference, but you, you I think that is a little bit you, you, it easier to think about. But anyway, so you take a real manifold, so good manifold, and R infinity. So that is a border space. Say R or P one R, or that is a product in the category of both of the spaces. Okay, so now you consider the infinity. Okay. Yeah. 
And so the uh, idea is to how to interpret them in terms of indices theoretically. <coughs> okay, so here we define the convolution. <coughs> so you have, you consider two, so the attitude act, you have the projection to the, so the, at the first projection, you take the first component and the second component, and you add up. So, so mu is t1, say t2 is x t1 plus t2. So they are morphisms of border space. And then define the plus the, co the convolution right, in this way. So that is the And another one, I home plus. So that is the opposite. Yeah, I think strict. Yeah, the government mentioned, government claimed, but I think here perhaps B is better, but I think it's and minus plus plus is better, but I think I will not write it. Those are no, yeah, but not so relevant and it's rather tedious, so I will not write it. And the definition is, so that is the usual P1, P2, usual definition. Okay. And I home plus K1, K2 is uh, P2 or P1 or P1, yeah, you better to change, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that is a definition. And the theorem is, this is that one. I don't know, it is a commutative monoidal category or what tensor category. With, so at the tensor function. And uh, you, you need to object is t equals zero. So that means m tensor t equals zero. So at the Definition. So when you take a yes. T1 plus T2, what is it? What is plus infinity plus? No, it depends on the old open part. Ah, that's an open. Yeah, yeah. That is the open part is concerned. So okay. as I, I so yeah. that is a morphism of both of the space. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that is only defined. It's a map on the open space with certain conditions. Okay. 
<coughs> and so the, the, uh, at is a unit object means, of course, k is k, k with some functorial property. <coughs> and I home is a, uh, I don't know the, the word, the word it, inner home for the tensor category. So it means it means home k1 tensor plus k2 k3 is home it is canonical isomorphic to home k1 i home plus so the art is D. Okay. Infinity and art is here. So that is a beautiful. <laughs> okay, so so that's the one. <laughs> So there are many item important. So that part is problem. So of course, this one is item important in the sense that if you tensor to this one, that is k equals zero. So that is a unit object. So it must be like that. And this one also. The, uh, are important and negative also that it, I don't write it and uh, similar uh, similarly this one is important there are many important And this one and negative one is at orthogonal. So you remember that uh, there is at item important. They are called orthogonal if you want to zero. And so that is at zero. Okay. So. And the other one is infinity one. So that is also the add important. <coughs> ah, and uh, so th th there are many add importance and they are related in a foreign way. Yeah. So for example, you add two things. So the, that is the important, that is the important, and they are also similar to each other. So the sum is the important. And you have a k equals zero. And as you cut it, I think so. Oh, no, 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 no. So the attitude this thing is triangle or K yeah the yeah or hmm, which is uh, huh? no 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 I'm sorry I'm sorry And KT, uh, which is better? <coughs> so the, the, they are the things to play on. So,
So this means that the morphisms are compatible with the idempotent. The morphisms are compatible with the isomorph. So an idempotent is there, an object plus the isomorphism. Yes, that's right. That, that's right. And the maps are compatible. Yeah, are compatible. And the boundary map, you don't say anything about. It's ah. just that the maps, and the two maps are compatible and the boundary map. Let me see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I, don't, I haven't ch 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 checked it. Yeah, maybe we need, there is some relation. Yeah. When you shoot by one, it's no longer the portrait, yeah? Mm. Uh, no, it's, it makes no sense because with a boundary map, it maps to object shifted by one, mm -hmm. and it will be no longer the portrait. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah, uh, that, that it, uh, I haven't checked it, but first, there can be some relation, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, perhaps, so, then, so, it, if there is an item potent, then you can have a subcategory. Yeah. So that is the one. So I'll not explain why I write like that. So that is K. Zero, and of course, that is one because of the, this. You know, let me see. I'm sorry. Plus, yes. And in fact, that is can be written. I think. Similarly, that is true also. We need something, but I think that. that hmm? Yeah. And you can define this positive. You change it to just a sign. And you have the intersection. So that is, in fact, k such that k is as much to pi inverse l for l in i. Km, where pi is a projection to n. <clears throat> so that is a constant along the fiber. So that, that is this. <clears throat> so you have here the infinity. So there are several ones, so here and the intersection is and zero. And because of this, if you so that one is isomorphic to the IKM. <clears throat> and usually, in a similar way, the quotient of this one is equal to the quotient of this one, and this quotient is asymmetric to equivalent to the quotient category. And uh, that one plus that one is that one. Plus. So that is the usual way. So we have the following. <coughs> So we define 
the sheaf of enhanced sheaf is so this one you divide with that one and this one and you have you define plus minus okay m is So that's the definition. <coughs> so that is E plus. That is also E plus. That is E minus. Mm -hmm. E minus. And this one is E. Okay. Quotients. Those are the quotients. Okay. Yeah. So. So that is a. So that is a isomorphic to the direct side. So that is the intersection. This one. So explicitly, that is given by. K, K. So th that is this component, and K. 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 <clears throat> so that is the one. <clears throat> okay. So. Some categories here. Yeah. Hmm? All the symmetric monoidal categories here. Yeah. Is this the plus? Uh, symmetric. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's monoidal categories. Symmetric or the commutative. Uh, you mean symmetric means the commutative? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. And I think. Uh, there is a one theorem. Oh, wait, I should state. Yeah. So, for example, I said that this one is equal to this one. And that is related to this one. And so. Okay, so here there are two operators, uh, plus and I hope plus, tensor plus, and they are in fact related in the following way. Okay, so this map is so that is functorial. So the, the, this map, because there is a map from the morphism from this one to this one, and that is isomorphic to K, because that is identity element, and that is I home plus K T equals zero, K, because that is a unit element, unit object, and we want this one because there is a map. So that is a composition map. <clears throat> and so that is embedded in a distinguished triangle. And the third term is an inverse image of some sheaf on uh, M, or it is in the sheaf on M. And L is, yeah, there are many ways to write it. Uh, I think uh, for example
Ja, so the point is, so they, those two are isomorphic in the enhanced in the shift category. So we call it the the category of of enhanced indices and in this category those two are you know, isomorphic so so there, there, there are two ways of expressions and those are the projection to e plus and e plus so that is a relation and so remark is, so you consider the direct image, and this one is, in fact, zero. And oh, I think oh, I think that is right. Yeah. So it, the other part remains, and that is it. OK. <clears throat> so that is the category we need. So for example, we consider those ones in that category. So the module. So for example, example, <clears throat> for example, K is isomorphic to K one N because uh, I erased, uh, uh, because I think that is clear. You have the you have this exact sequence, and that is zero, so it is equal to this one. Okay. And we write this one is limit. So that is in it originally that is in the sheaf of that's a it in the sheaf uh, I can remember K M R bus and you consider that is a in the sheaf on the border state border space M times R infinity and so you go to here. So that is uh, you can consider it as an enhanced sheaf. And uh, so that is the other one. And so that is the similar one. So that is more or less very similar to that. <coughs> And then, of course, in a similar way, K in
Okay, so now this category has a very similar property. For example, they are monoidal categories, symmetric or monoidal category, plus operators. So that, that is also well defined. So that is also well defined. And this one is also well defined. So that is well defined. And that is a tensor category and a similar property. <clears throat> positive and negative parts do not talk to each other. The tensor product is zero. Or positive and negative parts. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, I don't think. Let me see. I, oh. <laughs> I think. Yeah, for D, hmm? yeah the, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah. So zero when you have one positive and one negative, you get zero or what? Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. So, so the, I think that, that maximum is question. Yeah. P plus and so E plus. Zero. Yeah, th that is, so th this one is something, and that one is something. And uh, so it's commutative, and that tensor product of this one, this one is equal to zero. So that must be also one. <laughs> yeah, for this one too. So, in fact, so that is a, in fact, it E is a direct sum of two, two categories, but we only use this category. So, so from the beginning, it's enough to consider this one. Yeah, but uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know. Yes, so that is a problem of formalism, and it is not essential. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so so you have the the quotient map, okay. So this has a left and right adjoint. So we write LE, so that is the left adjoint goes to E I K M So that is given by K to Okay, and there is left adjoint, uh, right adjoint.
So that is the same one. I home. So those are the right adjoint and the left adjoint from going here to this one. So, so that is a, so of course this one and this one is I'm, it's isomorphic. So I mean, uh, you have M, there are two map LE and RE and two, I K M and the quotient map. And this one is isomorphic to identity. Both for LE and R. So those two objects are, are isomorphic. So that I explained uh, yeah, by this one. By this one, that is clear. So the next step is, so, so this category also behaves similar to the usual category. It means, uh, assume that there is a map, M to N, then you can define the pullback and push forward for the enhanced initiatives. So that is rather easy because you consider the product map. Okay. And you have infinity to and infinity. So you have, for example, R, F, V, and R, tilde, star. <clears throat> so you have the quotient map. And uh, so that gives two functors that I denote E, F, sweep, and E, F, stop. <coughs> so this, so you take the quotient, then this, I mean, this composition factor in this way. Similarly, you have uh, inverse image also. So D, I, K, N, F, T. So you have inverse image and upper shift. And it factors also. And, and they satisfy usual relation. I don't write it anymore, but the usual relations. Yeah, for example, E F E star is. I don't know. Which 
uh, I think a GF or a star or the, the, the other way around. I can't remember. Anyway, those kind of there are many actually, many properties, but that is similar to the usual one. So it, I will not write it. Yeah, for example, yeah, for yeah, perhaps or or I home plus L E F star K is E F star I home plus E F inverse L K where K is on M and L is in on N. Then so that is a if you replace home, you, you usual home, then that is a usual relation. And for the other one also, E home plus E F shriek K L. So that is E star in home class k upper shriek so those are the usual relations and so basically so it satisfies all the relations similar properties so i think to manipulate those ones it's very similar to the usual shift the category of sheaves and so on so so basically with all the uh, those kind of techniques in uh, shift theory can work for enhanced energy shifts. Let me see. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so now a little bit complicated object. So here we consider very sp special kind of objects. And, and that is so we call stable objects. Okay. So let k is in e plus i k m. So it means k is as much as k. Then the following conditions are equivalent. So that is isomorphic to K by the definition. A. So that's a restriction map. Or the other way around, I home plus. So that is a asymmetry, okay? Or, ah, oh, I can do the definition first. Okay, and KME is that appeared dream. Plus infinity. <clears throat> so that's a definition. And you tensor this one is. 
and uh, th th there are a lot of properties. Those are all equivalent. <clears throat> so, and this one satisfied that condition. That is nothing but this. So, this one satisfied that condition. And for which L? Mm -hmm. For some L in E I K M. For some L. No, of course, it, it, it case has fight that condition, but for any. So, we say that in, in, in this case, K is stable if those conditions if I such so the I think better to remark for anything. So the problem is uh, in those for the in the sheaves, it usually. To calculate this one for arbitrary k, k prime, i k m, so that is it, rather difficult. But if k belongs to, so is it is usually difficult to calculate. But so I'm in home, f k. F is in the, it's not in the shift, but shift, and K is in the shift. That is it rather easy, more or less, uh, if K is, so it is not exactly true because that is in the derived category, but more or less, if it is like that, and that is our home. Ki, and the, that is the limit of the, of the in the shifts. So, for example, if you take the cohomology group, that, that is two. So that is calculable because that is in the shift theory. But for this one, it's not. It's calculable, but you need uh, so. As you see that I home limit something is limit of projective limit of I home something. So here there's projective limit. And projective limit is not exact. So that part causes a problem. So usually it is difficult. But <clears throat> For stable object, it's a little bit easier in the following sense. <clears throat> yeah. For example, R E home plus K E tensor plus F K and F is say the M R. So it's a shift and K is or the I K. 
huh? So that is uh, ion plus. So you can put it here, F ion plus. K. And if you assume that K is stable, then that is K if K is stable. <coughs> so now here that is a shift, that is an in shift. So it, it is more or less calculable. Otherwise, you have to be very careful to calculate those kind of those kind of object. So that is the advantage of a stable object. And so let me see, we have still a time, uh, five minutes. So just a definition. So assume now uh, perhaps I think I will stop that. Stop here. Yeah. Is it true that what is the product of k of t bigger than or equal to zero and k of t strictly bigger than zero? Is it zero? Mm. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You mean this one? So that is zero. No, no, t bigger than zero. Ah, no, no, but t bigger than zero. Yeah. Yes, that is zero. So you have this one, and you cut this one, then. That is a co-module of the interval. So that is zero. 